Good morning guys, welcome to another video by Antique Serena. My name is Walter O'Neill. Here's another video of my uh, car boot day. I'm snouting about, I'm going to sell in uh, a new car boot sale I haven't sold that before. Um, a few days ago you saw me put a video up where I was buying at Gavartha Castle in Mirth Tidville. This castle um, produced all the stoneware planters for me and some other pieces. It was a beautiful day. Um, based on how busy it was, I'm going to have a go selling up there. So I'm off to collect my friend now and I'm going to do a video throughout the day out and about, letting you know how it goes, see if I buy anything while I'm selling and so forth. Um, so that should be a bit of fun. Um, and just to give uh, those of you um, who don't know Wales um, a little glimpse of what I see every day when I look out my window. Um, show you guys. Here's the view from outside my window. How lucky am I, yeah? I live in the Welsh Valleys and I wake up every morning, you can hear the birds. Um, have a view like that. The trees are a bit thick at the moment, this morning. Um, but the other side is absolutely stunning. Anyway guys, I'm going to go collect Sandra, um, it's going to be a beautiful weekend, let's, uh, let's get it rolling, speak to you soon guys. Hi guys, well I've just picked Happy up and believe me, she isn't happy. Say hello. You going on film, say hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello. She's had a bit of a pout this morning, she's whingy and moody and she even moaned what time we got up. The Griscal. <laughs> Do you want to tell me a story now about your little I'm playing up? No. Yeah, you sure now? 100%. <laughs> well, we're off to Merthyr. That is, unless I throw her out halfway. If I'm driving and I'm doing 80, 70, 60, whatever, I'm going to push her out because believe me, she's driving me nuts. And that face says it all. <laughs> <laughs> so we're off to Merthyr, guys. Um, Another look at that view, guys. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> You're not going to talk to the camera today? You're just going to say hello, like. Oh, what am I supposed to say? She a barrel of laughs, sir. I'll talk to you later when I wake up a bit. Some of us been up for an hour already. So have I. See you soon, guys. Bye. <laughs> There we have it again guys, there's that beautiful Cavartha Castle, Merth Tidville. Look at that for a bloody sight. The water fountain by there, oh god I love that. And then of course you got the beautiful castle. Zoom in on this. That is spectacular guys. This castle built by uh, the Crochet family in 1820 um, and they were responsible for all the industry in Merthyr Tidville, the, uh, the iron works and so forth. And that's not just it guys with the castle, take a look at these grounds. You got the lake down behind the trees there. They got a little railway station going around for the kids to go on the train. Say hello Abby. <laughs> Hello! Again, Merth Tidville. Nobody can say, guys, we haven't got beautiful country. Look at that in Wales. Stunning or what?
Well guys, you just had a little scan of the uh, car boot cell. It is beautiful up here. I'm being sunburnt like a uh, burnt crisp. Um, it's very quiet on the selling up here, but I've done really well already on the buy-in. I'm going to give you a little selection of some of the things I've bought. Um, I'm not going to put these back and on the table and show you when I get home. I'm just going to show you the pieces now as and when I buy them. Now, first things first, we have, yet again, more silver, guys. Fully all marked. Solid silver, out of cutlery again, a pound. What can I say, guys? Don't know the weight yet, I haven't bothered weighing it. I've just bought it in. We have a solid silver um, napkin ring, unmarked. However, I've just tested the piece, if you can see there and it is solid silver it's an early one probably Victorian um, but it's a good weight and as I've just said I have acid tested and that's come back that's right here we have um, a beautiful beautiful uh, badge solid silver and enamel not sure what the letters stand for yet I haven't had a look it's obviously it's Welsh it's got the Welsh dragon um, they actually knew this was silver. Fully hallmarked on the reverse, guys. This is an early piece. You know, it's mid-century. It's really nice. Didn't pay four for it, mind. It came in for three. Then we have a necklace that come in for five pound, which is a rope chain and cameo. Beautiful, beautiful quality, fully stamped up. Uh, you can see it on the back there. Now, it's not a Victorian cameo, no, but uh, it is still stunning. And when I put it together and show you now, there we have it, guys. Absolutely beautiful. And a nice uh, silver rope chain to boot. So, I'm more than happy with that. We have a silver pin cushion. The marks are really dirty. I got to give it a good clean and read them. Um, of a sow, original uh, padding for the pins. Look at that, guys! Over the moon or what? That came in this morning for three quid. Three whole pounds. Can't fault that one, guys. Then we come on to two pieces of beautiful bronze. Um, I love this one. We have another sow. Come from the same place as the pin cushion. It's solid bronze. And then the same bronze on resin. This is solid bronze. You can see the detail. It's beautiful quality. Age wise, it's 20th century. But it is a really good weight. Really nicely cast. Good patina. Look at, the, look at the face on that. Beautiful. So I'm really happy with that, guys. I paid uh, four or five pounds for that one. It wasn't a lot of money. My favourite piece of the day coming up. What I have here is a solid bronze cockerel. Now this is Chinese. And believe it or not, it's a weight for the weighing scales for heroin. So they would have weighed the heroin with this, and I can tell you now, that's a fair old lump of heroin. Lovely patina, really nice condition, solid bronze. I paid three quid for that this morning, and if it turns out to be genuine uh, Chinese uh, heroin scales, then I can tell you now that's going to be a hundred, hundred and fifty pound for that little bronze. What more can I say? You know, so already you've seen a really nice selection of silver. I don't know how much the pink cushions pull yet, but I can tell you now they're not cheap. Um, the Cameo, you know, 30, 35 pound, 40 pound. Silver all goes away anyway, as you know. The uh, enamel badge is beautiful. Love the two bronzes. And then my final piece so far, guys. Oh, I love it. What we have here 
is a piece, a statue or monument if you like. It's about 12 or 14 inches tall and it is all hand carved out of one single piece of coal and you have the centre column with four miners carved around the outside. Titled End of an Era, fully stamped, made out of Welsh coal. Now I done a little group the other day and filmed showing you a collection of mining memorabilia. What mining valley, you know, someone who lives in the mining valleys, well they wouldn't love to have that on display. You're talking that's a piece of art and you're not talking a little small sculptor. Somebody really knew what they were doing with this piece. It is stunning. Um, now I paid a tenner for it this morning. Um, what's it worth? In my opinion it's worth 70, 80 pound of anyone's money. It's not a lot of age to it, but as I've said, carved out of a piece of coal, put on a lovely bit of ebony wood, nice plaque. I may keep that because I live in an old mining house, um, just above the colliery in Penrith Hyber. Um, so I may keep that on display for a little while before I sell it. I haven't decided yet, but either way, it is absolutely beautiful. So as you can see, and um, this is a small car boot, I've shown you a little uh, scan of the boot. It is small, there's no more than 50 cars here, 40 cars here, but I've bought really well again. Five pieces of solid silver, two pieces of amazing bronze, and a piece of local history. Um, these mines are all closed now, so that's a really nice piece of history guys. Um, and of course we got some help outside watching the store for me with customers so I can make the film so it's all good so it's carry on selling carry on buying see where else we get but oh, guys I go out seven days a week if I come back with this gear hope you enjoyed seeing it guys I'll add some photos in at the end of the film of the pieces for you to see okay well the boots winding down now um, it's pretty much finished. <laughs> so I'll give you a little glimpse now. Um, get that brooch. Out. I've just bought another brooch now at the end of the day for two quid, guys. Eight hundred grade. Fully stamped, just above the. Uh, the link up there. I'm going to give you a little last look at the um, car boot now, it's closing down pretty much. I'm not even on Hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> we burnt. Burnt to a crisp, <laughs> honest to God, it's boiling is 27 28 degrees up yeah I'll give you a little glimpse oh. <laughs> all I can say is ouch uh, the boots pretty pretty much finished um, parking up now um, the uh, organizer comes up to me says how have you done I said yeah it was all right it was a little slow on the selling side I said but I've bought amazing I've had some silver some gold and what have you and um, he walks away and the girl opposite me comes over she says I tell you, you buy silver. I said, yeah. She said, uh, I got some jewellery I haven't put out. I forgot all about it. And uh, she said she wants 20 quid for it. It's a bag full of silver and gold, guys. There's silver lockets, silver chains, gold chains, gold bangles. There's two lockets. Silver um, bracelet. That lot just cost me 20 quid. I haven't gone through it yet. But you know what? Honest to God, can you even believe it? What was it you said? Go on, tell him. I said, you bastard, if you fell in shit, you'd come out smelling the roses. <laughs> See you soon, guys. How's that, guys, for a bit of fun? I'm going to hand you over to the uh, Sandy Pants. See if she can capture them for you. Up in the sky. I don't know if you can see them, is paragliders. Maybe once you get past the trees, you might see them now. I see them, there they are. Ah, I can see, I can see them guys, and you can't. I'm trying, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm giving it a good go. Where are you? Where are you? There they are. Ah, I'm looking for them. Where are they? 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 Where are
I don't know whether to call them dead devils, crazy, stupid, or just plain right having fun, but look at them all up there. Put it this way, guys, I'd love to do it, and I have been nagging this one beer to actually give it a go. We maybe won't go up there. Of there. Honest to God, absolutely stunning. Several of them, guys. Have you got them? Yes, I have them. They are gorgeous. Hi guys, couldn't resist. We parked up outside um, Sports Direct. Sandra's gone in to get a couple of footballs, and I've just sat here and sorted out the bag I just purchased of gold and silver. All this is fully hallmark, nine karat gold, and there's one set in there with diamonds. 13.5 grams, guys. I'll allow um, a couple of grams for the um, couple of stones. 13 and a half grams of gold, fully hallmarked. I've had three or four pieces to put back out on the market, and these were the lockets. Here's the first full set of English hallmarks, not even 925 stamp. Um, obviously, nice chains, and the second. There you go guys, there's the second one, absolutely spectacular, and again, another full set of hallmarks. Have you footballs? Yes I have. 13 and a half grams, That's really fully hallmarked. Oh, well done. So there we have it guys, that's the end of the buy-in for the day. Um, I'm off home now and I'm going to take the children out um, down to Panath. And I may um, add in a few um, few little snippets of the children out playing. See you soon, guys. Well, guys, we're um, we're home. We've swapped cars, and now we're off down to the uh, sea. Sandra there eating a fab. Caught red-handed, guys. Take a look. If you're Four in Slimming World, on Slimming World, guys. If you're in Slimming World, there she is. There's John by there in the little corner eating his chalk ice. Laser beam. Sure, let's see that chalk ice, John. Is it nice? Yeah, laser beam. And there's my beautiful Shannon in the back. Love you. Love you, Love you John. Love you. <coughs> <laughs> Come on, say it. I love you, bestie. There I you love go. You too. <laughs> anyway, guys, we're um, we're off down the seaside now. So these two in the back are gonna go in the water. I tell you what. 27 degrees today, take a look at that. That's sunburn. All I can say is, oh my god, ouch. Ignore the uh, the pathetic tat I had as a kid, a kid many, many moons ago. I haven't had a chance to have it re removed. Um, safe to say that's the only tat I got. Anyway guys, we're off. Um, believe me, I haven't left myself out. A nice little chalk ice for me. <laughs> ice cream and chocolate all the way. See you soon guys. Bye. Everyone, Shannon. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Hi guys. Well, we're down in uh, Panath um, Seafront, and it is absolutely glorious. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> sense. Where's Shannon and John gone? There they are, coming down the steps now. They're going to go and have a play in the pebbles and in the sea. It's my two little ones, guys. Is John going to go in the water? Let's see. Pebble Beach isn't as good as the sand one, obviously. In you go, John. Don't be scared. Look at that. People out there fishing on the boat, guys. You can see Sully Island in the distance. It's beautiful. That's Lavnock Point down there. I fish off that point down there. Beautiful cod.
lifeguards out there playing look on the water. Absolutely beautiful guys. As you can see everybody's out and about just making the most. Shannon and John have yet to get in the water. They're still pissing about on the edge. I swear to God John's gonna kill somebody with these boulders the way he's throwing them. And you've got all the speed boats out, they're really just enjoying it, making the most of this beautiful, beautiful day. Hi guys, we're at Cosminton Lakes, absolutely beautiful. All little baby swans, I've never seen them so small. Look at them! absolutely enjoying this house. It's a perfect end to a really good day and fair play. I could stay here for hours. I'm sunburning. Hello. Say hello then. Hello. Shannon, you going to say hello? Hi guys. <laughs> hello. Good day. <laughs> We're very lucky to have things like this on our doorstep, guys. Don't we don't realise how privileged we are. This is Cosminton Lakes. Not a few hundred yards down the road is Sully Carboots Hill. Gorgeous, isn't he? He's in the wrong one, I'm sure he is. John, be careful now on the edge. They are beautiful. Good morning, guys. It's um, Sunday morning. Um, we've been in um, Prince Charles Hospital all night, myself and my daughter. Um, I had to have x-rays on my knee and on my back. Uh, my daughter hurt all her chest. Basically, we came home from work yesterday and um, we uh, went up to a friend's house, had some dinner. I was going to do some dog sitting, so we, um, we were bringing the dog down. We were coming back in two cars to the house after dinner. And um, I was pulling into my street. I live in a private street, it's a little secluded street. And uh, a woman came from behind and smashed into the back of us. Must have been doing 40, 50 mile an hour. Um, you're not going to believe the state of my car now. We, my daughter's in Elvermes. I'm in uh, Elvermes. Been on uh, serious painkillers all night. Um, I'm only at the car now because they're recovering the vehicle. Um, so I'm going to give you a little look at the uh, car um, and the road. Everything. The woman didn't even so much as hit the brakes. Um, so I'll show you that now guys. Okay, this is about where the collision took place. There's my vehicle down there. I'm going to show you my car in just a minute. I'm going to show you the road. This woman hasn't so much as touched the brakes. Not so much as touched them. She's come down this hill in one hell of a speed. And it's a steep hill guys. She's come down this hill. She's impacted us. She, as you can see, she hasn't so much as touched the brakes. And you can see, this is where the impact occurred. I literally 
was turning into the street here so I wasn't stationary but I was slow slow moving coming down indicator on to turn in here into my private road she impacted me as I'm turning starting to turn and she hit me that hard she have sent me straight down past my junction this is with my daughter in the car mine guys my daughter screaming like you wouldn't believe I'll show you the back of the car what's left of it back of the car quite strong didn't crumple that bad give me one hell of a wallop knocked my car from there all the way down to it impacted this car this car was in the banking down here uh, they dragged that out last night I'm going to show you this car, this is where the front of my car impacted the Peugeot. That's the state on the Peugeot and of course it hit it on the front. The front of the Peugeot isn't um, too bad and that's where well, you can see the damage down the bottom there. A bit of damage down here where did it hit the fence here and went into the fence. There's even a part of my car down here. That's how far it's flew. Um, now I'm going to show you my car guys. You're going to have shock your life. How we weren't killed, I don't know. This bonnet normally comes right out to here. It's literally all just crumpled in like a tin can. Obviously that's what they're designed to do to take some of the impact. However, I still had bits and bobs in the car. Um, that was taken over to my mother's. And I got hit in the back of the head with a jewellery box which hurts like hell. Hell of a mess guys, eh? So I'm without the car. And you know the worst part? The cow done a runner. I checked on my daughter. Um, my daughter was screaming, so I checked on my daughter. Um, she was all right then. I got out the car to check on the other driver. Um, she was in a mess. Her airbag had deployed. She was on the steering wheel, so I went up. I checked on her. She said she was okay. She got out the car. My daughter got out the car, I went across, gave my daughter a coach, picked my phone up. As soon as I dialed 999, phoned the police, this woman dived in a car, sped off as fast as she could down the road, down the bottom there, and shot off down through Khyber and away. Now, I managed to get her a number plate, um, and I've given her a number plate to the police. Um, whether or not they catch her, I don't know. But uh, she knew the roads because the speed she was travelling was ridiculous. And I'm not being funny. I was not far off a stationary target, guys. Look at the state of my car. Front and back crumpled to pieces. And the worst part about it is I had my 10-year-old daughter in the car and this woman didn't even so much as fucking brake. Not a single brake mark on this road. No one. What was yesterday a brilliant day, all round, buying wise, everything else, turned into a horror story. Um, my daughter's okay, we got home, stupid hours this morning, 3, 4 o'clock, I can't even remember what it was. Um, and Ma and I, Brufin and Coco, them all a minute. Um, so it's been bad. So they'll take the car away and I will give you updates as to if they catch this girl. Uh, we got a number plate, we're going to make a model. I've seen her so I can identify her, so believe me, if the police don't do their job, I'll find her. Hi guys, just a little update. Um, as you just saw at the end of this film, um, we were in a uh, pretty serious car accident yesterday. Um, my daughter and I, we, uh, we finally got discharged um, just before 4am. Um, from our local hospital. Both of us quite bruised and battered. Um, I 
I know the police got a really, really hard job to do, and I'm not slagging the police off for the job they do. But there is something seriously wrong in this um, country when a woman can do a hit and run, plow into her two cars, almost take a third out as she's driving out to the village. Um, and when you phone the police, they turn around and say, we've only got one officer on duty in the entire borough. Seriously. You go out and you throw a fag on the floor or drop a bit of litter, £75 fine, they're always there. You work that out. You go down the road, 35 mile an hour in a 30, you're booked. There's always someone in the speed camera. How can they afford to pay these people to sit in speed cameras or to walk the streets handing out fines for dropping a little cigarette or um, throwing an apple out your car? They're always there when it seems to be fining you and things like that. Um, but, you know, a serious crime like that. Um, and I'll tell you exactly what went down. Um, basically, Bracken, go lay down, please. I'm dog sitting. What went down was um, we had the uh, car crash um, at about five o'clock. Uh, yesterday afternoon. Now we phoned the police. Oh well, start again. We had the car crash about five o'clock. Um, I got out the car, checked on my daughter, she was okay. Went across, checked the other lady, she was okay. She, the other lady got out the car. I walked back over to my daughter to give her a coach and check she was okay. I picked the phone up to dial 999. As soon as the woman saw I was phoning the police, she dived back in her car and sped off. Now I was already on the phone to the police as she started pulling off, so I read out the number plate instantly to the police and I was on the phone giving them directions as to where she was speeding because I'm on a hill I can see. Didn't want to know. I turned around to the, uh, the call agent and I said, are you even going to pursue her? No, she could be drunk, she could be anything. Either way she's just fled the scene of an um, accident and she's in a weapon. A car is a weapon. It almost killed me and my daughter yesterday. Um, didn't want to know. About 10 minutes later the police officer arrived and he took the statement and he radioed in he said has anybody uh, done a check on the vehicle and the address and he come back over the radio no there's nobody to do it so he turns around to me and says well he's the only one on in the area there isn't another officer on um, so he left the scene of the accident we were waiting for the ambulance he left the scene of the accident to go and attend to try and find this woman. I thought that was fine, his services were better taking her off the street than they were sitting with us waiting for an ambulance. Hour later the ambulance still hadn't arrived so I phoned 101 which is the non-emergency number, spoke to them and they said well emergencies came up first so they kept pushing us back. So I cancelled the 999 and we drove up to the hospital ourselves. Uh, we got to the hospital something like about six, seven o'clock um, we left the hospital and come on about 4 a.m. Um, so needless to say that was seriously stressful and long. Now in the meantime um, I phoned the police for an update and all uh, the update I had of the police was about 10, 11 o'clock last night was that the officer who left the scene was on the en route to go to this lady's home to see if she'd gone home and he got called on to another emergency. Now I don't understand why if he's actively dealing with one emergency they'd go off to another. They abandoned my case. Now this woman was recklessly driving. She hit my car about 50-60 mile an hour. No care, sped off. There's a house opposite me, uh, number five, and they had a baby in the car less than one year old and she almost hit them at the bottom of the hill trying to get away from the scene. Yet the police abandoned my call to go to an emergency. Now obviously, the, I don't know what the emergency was, it could have been serious. Um, and I'm not blaming the police officer, he has to do what he's told. Um, but surely they should have called in other officers from out of the borough to help and assist if there was need. Or start taking some people off the uh, crap of speed cameras and 
litter picking, fines and crap like that. And don't tell me speed cameras save lives. Taking people like her off the road save lives. Um, anyway, uh, we left it, phoned uh, this morning, had my car recovered. Insurance isn't open until Monday, but they have an emergency number to have the car recovered. So the car recovered this morning and I put a notice on Facebook, putting her number plate up, putting photos of my car up. Within a few hours, her car had been found after about a hundred shares. Um, so I left my home, drove to where they told me the car was, and she had, fair enough, hidden the car down the side of a garage in some bushes. And I'll add the photos of that in at the end of the video. Um, in fact, at the end of the video, you'll see all the images right throughout the day, all the way through to the accident, and then finishing with the cars. Um, so I went down there, and I sat with the car until the police officer came to recover the car um, and wait for that to be told. But after asking them for an update again, the update to me was they'd been to her home, there was no answer, they couldn't find the vehicle, um, so it was ongoing. That was their response this morning, which is why I went on Facebook and posted it, and lo and behold, within a few hours, I had found the vehicle. So now we got the vehicle impounded. Um, the girl is still on the run, we don't know who it is, the police know obviously, we don't know who it is, um, so we'll see where we go from there. So that's uh, the only update I can give you, uh, we, we walked away from the accident so that is in itself something was looking over us. Um, obviously as you saw the car boot sale was amazing Saturday, didn't go anywhere today, was too ill to uh, go out buying today. I've already got half a dozen videos pre-made from the previous weeks so I'll still be posting up videos but I won't be doing anything actively this week so next week it may impact on how many videos I release so we'll see how it goes but at the end of the film now guys you'll find images throughout starting at the beginning of the day with the car boot sale I'll show you the images of the day out and then at the end we'll come to the images of the um, car um, so you can see it all then. I'm going to insert the video of the footage of the car before this now. So you've already seen the actual car anyway, but I'll show you the images then um, where we found her car at the end. Anyway guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. It's been an eventful video. Um, don't forget, give me a like and a share guys. Um, don't forget, subscribe and there's a little bell. Click on that, you'll get notifications of our videos. You'll find us on Facebook, Antiques Arena. We're on eBay, Antiques Arena Clearance. And we have our own website, antiquesarena.co.uk. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.